We're finding this morning it's a little bit slow. And when it's slow and you're casting the big lures all day, it can get pretty tough. So what we do sometimes, we actually do change to a small lure when we come to a new area, such as the 100 mil sort of thing, just to find the fish. We're not necessarily flicking the lures to try and target what we want to do, but when it is tough, you don't know whether the fish are biting. So we always put on a smaller lure just to see if the fish are biting. As soon as we catch a little flattered or even get a touch, away they go. We know fish are in the area, we know we're confident, back come out the bigger lures. So there's, that's how we, sometimes when things are going tough, we just flick something different. Let's see if the fish are biting, if they are in the area, they're feeding, because if the little ones are around, you can guarantee they're hanging around a big flathead. So once you get a hit or a touch, go back to the big one. Keep persevering because the rewards are there. So find the fish, keep flicking. We've got another nice fish here. Don't think it's quite as big as the other one the other day. Feels all right. Not as big, good fish. Maybe an 80, definitely. Come on, darling. Usually fine with these fish, they'll come in you get one net shot and then they wake up. Sometimes you get them in. This one's not doing a great deal. Pretty nervous again. This one's just lit too. Just turn her around. Come on. All right, any one of these one-handed is not easy. This one's not as big as the other day. But I reckon anyone's gonna be happy to catch that fish. exact lure that I was just showing you before, that five inch lure. We've just moved off the bank that we were on, but we were in a very, very similar spot. We just cast it to that edge again, and we've got another nice fish. There's nothing better, your knees are knocking. That's grouse. We'll just take this lure out and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at it. So, Here's the fish we just got before. You can see here she's just come in at 81, so not as big as yesterday, but still uh, you've got to be happy about that one. So, so what we did, we've just come into a, a, another little cove, different than yesterday, and we hadn't fished it sit on this trip at all. And um, so what we did, we, we cast a little, couple of smaller lures around until we, we, we got a little bite. Well, actually, Troy caught a little fish there. And um, straight away, we know there's some fish in the area. Whenever there's a small fish, we know there's a good fish. So we put the bigger lures back on, and, and there she is. So, you've got to be happy about that one. She'll probably go, she'll go close to four kilo, I reckon, this fish, but maybe not quite. Now, we, you might have heard us say, it was actually yesterday, we were saying we have a rule on this boat no fish over 60. Well, we were chatting with the fisheries last night. We've been out of town, so we hadn't heard the news, but there was that proposed slot limits now on duskies. So it's, it was the limit now on duskies, still five fish in Victoria, but you can only keep fish between 30 and 55 centimetres. So now 56 centimetres is an illegal fish to keep. And the fine is something like over $400 if you get caught with a fish. 56 centimetres or more. So make sure we obey those slot limits. This fish now, we used to be able to keep one of these. We personally never did. But this fish now is illegal. Will cost you over $400 fine. So this fish has to go. She's just about, she's just about ready. She's biting down now. And uh, we'll let her get the hand out of the thumb. And oh, there, she, there she goes. Beautiful. 
Still swimming away, beautiful. As Scott spoke about why we're out in the boat today, about the new slot limit in Victoria, between 30 and 55, you can keep some, anything under, anything above, it's now a no-go zone in Victoria. We've just got a couple of, probably 43 centimetre flatties, which there's nothing wrong with keeping a couple of smaller ones for a feed. We pulled up on the bank, we fished hard this morning, we're hungry, so we're gonna just fill it a couple up and cook them fresh on the barbie. Now there's nothing wrong at all with keeping a couple of nice fillets to cook up. So we just run the knife right, we find the backbone, run it right down. I guess filling a flathead's quite easy quite easy, but some people sometimes skinning, skinning a fish is a little bit hard, so we we got a little trick that we, we like to do, that's why I'm leaving that fin there. I'm cutting inside the two fins, down to the bone, running it along, and then we've got a nice juicy fillets there. We'll probably just leave that, throw in the water. Now the reason why we leave that fin is, we, look, we can you can push your thumb into that area of the skin, and watch how easy it peels off. Just like peeling a bit of snake skin. Straight off, perfect fillet. Can't go wrong, we'll show you again. Push inside that tag, spread the skin back like so. Then just purely slide it off like a sock, like so. Perfect fillet every time, no skin. Then we just run a knife through there to bone it. Chuck it on the barbie, and we'll be eating fresh, fresh, fresh fillets within a couple of minutes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's go around the back of the boat. It's good fish, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Another good fish. Oh yeah, it's a belter. Doesn't feel like it's hooked very well. One shot, don't ya? That's that one shot we talked about with that net, and if you don't get them, boof, off they go. Like that. He's taking out a bit of line now. Just waking up. It's a really good fish. People say flatties don't go well. Well, what do you reckon? <laughs> I might uh. He's really screaming on. hard today we've been out all day we got that 81 this morning this one's better than that nice fish saw that it was almost in the net we probably would have got that with if with a guy with two hands in the net and then all of a sudden she decided that it wasn't time and she's really going this fish one of the better fish I reckon Well, I don't know, the footage around there, we've just come out of the wind because it was very windy around there. But how about they had this fish go, eh? She took out a real lot of line. It's another absolute ripper. We just measured her at 90 centimetres. And, uh, well, yeah, oh, I'm having a good day. <laughs> having a really good day. We just weighed this girl in the net. We always weigh our fish in the Enviro net so they're fully protected and cradled. She's coming in at 5.8 kilo, so another really good fish. And uh, we're just about to let her go. Oh, it's a good fish, dude. Is it? Yeah. Hey, mate. 
Bubba guessed it. Oh, that's, oh, that's not as big. It's not as big. So it's a nice fish, dude. It's not not like the others. Feisty, in. So it is. Well, still the same day. I've had a really good day, and uh, I thought this was a little bit bigger in the water, but it's just come up 71 centimeters. So another another good fish, and just shows that using these lures and doing what we're doing is is paying off. It's um it's getting a bit dark now, so it's coming onto that really good bite time also. So we're going to let this one go quickly and keep going. So here she goes. This one's only been out of the water just about a minute, so this one's going to fly. There she goes. Beautiful. So there you have it. Troy and myself have just been fishing for two days now and you can see we've caught some really good fish, really quality fish. Just to go through some of the things we've been using again. Don't be afraid to cast these big lures. This one here is my absolute favourite. It's accounted for two of those good fish. Sometimes when you're out and you're fishing with these really big lures and your mate might be using a normal lure that you chase flathead with, maybe 70 mil, you'll start pinning a few fish and you're thinking, I might change my lure back, but don't. Persist with these, because the rewards are there. So a couple of the other lures we've been casting this weekend are lures such as this, but you can see similar size, and this one here. That's probably about the smallest lure we'll go for. That's about a five inch lure, 125 mil. And um, yeah, that, that's about the minimum size we'll be casting when we're targeting these big fish. Get yourself a good rod, a nice, a, a bit heavier than what you'd normally use. So we've got the, the Nitro Baby Viper, it's the newest rod in their range and this is our first time we've been using them and we, we really like them. A good sight, a good quality 4000 reel with, with the leader. Tie a knot that you feel comfortable with. I personally tie a double uni knot. Other people use other knots and tell me this is a better knot. If it's working for you, if you're not losing fish on it, you can tie it properly. Don't change, be, be confident in that knot. We use 14 or 16 pound leader. You can go lighter, you can go to eight or 10, but that big fish that we caught on day one, as I said, had that leader a good six inches down its mouth. The mouth on a fish like that is huge. They open their mouth, they suck that lure in, and more often than not, that lure is right down its mouth. When you're on eight pound, and it starts taking a couple of runs, you can very easily lose that fish. I've personally done it and it's, and it's a heartbreaking experience. So don't be afraid to go up to about a 14 pound leader or even 16 pound leader. You'll, you'll never lose a fish. If you play the fish correctly, don't use too much drag. You will never get cut off on the 14 or the 16 pound leader. And I don't believe that it puts off the fish either. We, we catch the same amount of numbers no matter what we use. So there you have it. Get yourself a good rod, nice reel. Cast the big lures, don't be afraid to cast them. Keep casting them even if your mate's catching fish. You'll get them eventually, the results will come. Get yourself a good pair of Polaroids. Look for those weed edges, look for the drop-offs and keep peppering those edges. If you're catching smaller fish through there, there's a big fish somewhere there as well. So come back to it a bit later and hit it with those big lures and you'll get yourself one of those beautiful fish. So there you have it. That's some of the techniques we use. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Reel It In and we hope you can too can get out there and catch one of these beautiful creatures.